minutes. My name's Paul, by the way, and I'm a reader in the social economy here in the Faculty of uh, Education, Health and Community, like people here. And I'm going to talk about my experience of uh, doing my PhD, uh, which actually submitted in 2009, so it's not that long ago. And actually, for me, there was no life after a thesis. There was no life before it either, because there was no thesis. So we're going to talk about uh, a different way of doing a PhD, which is by published works. And what did I do? That's the long title. I realise you should not have a long title when doing PhDs, because when you go down there to get them bound, they charge by those gold letters <laughs> by each one. <laughs> Cost about 30 quid per, per volume. Do not do that. That's one tip. <laughs> Short titles, cheaper. So I did, for my PhD, I'll read it out because this is the background, <coughs> tackling poverty to achieving financial inclusion, the transformation of the British Credit Union movement, 1999, 1998 to 2008. That's quite significant, those dates. You see that uh, here from the Research Unit for Financial Inclusion, where I do a lot of work, um, I spend a lot of my time, actually most of my time, doing research into financial services for people on low incomes, which involves actually doing research into the community finance sector. People might not have heard about credit unions, but they are community finance institutions that often in Britain serve lower income communities. Not totally, but often do serve lower income communities. Why is it important 1998? because that's the year I came to Liverpool John Moores University. And I came here not to do research, and certainly not to do a PhD, but I came here to teach management mostly, um, other subjects as well, but mostly management on courses to do with youth and community development. Of course, that was my background for many years before that. I'd worked in the local authority community education department where we were running educational programs and community interventions for people on lower incomes in, uh, in and around Manchester. But I came here to teach. But at the time, I had a very wise uh, line manager who was a professor at the, t at the time who said, what are you going to research? I said, I thought I came here to teach. So oh, no, it's a university, we do research. You do research. So from the very beginning, 1998, I started doing research projects into financial services, into financial services in low-income communities. Why? Because that was my, my background and that's where I came from. So I started doing research, and I started doing research particularly into the credit union sector in Britain, which was very small in those days. It's grown a lot since, but we won't go into the details of that, but um, that's what I started doing. So, the PhD submission, what did I have to do? Now, remember I started writing and researching and publishing quite a long time ago without any thought of doing a PhD. You know, so, in this, so I wasn't doing it for that particular purpose. But many years later, I realized that I'd done so much research and so much writing and published so many works that all of this could be brought together in a PhD for published works. So it was all in kind of, I was looking backwards for a lot of the time. So when I came to do a PhD in published works and spoke to people here about what was involved, they said, well, what you need to do, you need a, a portfolio of published works um, of at least five. You need to have those published in you know, peer-reviewed journals and um, they need to be of a certain quality. Actually, I'm going to go through these in, you know, in each section in a little bit more detail as I go through our little presentation this evening. But just to say, what I actually put together in the end was a portfolio of six published works between those dates which included four peer-reviewed journal articles, two peer-reviewed chapters in books. You don't usually like chapters in books on this, but uh, so long as you can prove and have the evidence and show who the peer reviewers were, it has 
can be accepted. So I actually got two chapters accepted as well. But I had to give chapter and verse and the details of the people who were the reviewers at the time. And, but of course, those six published works that I put together, which were the journal articles and the chapters, that wasn't all I'd done in Liverpool John Board University since 1998. That was built up on a you know, corpus of 23 other published research, research reports that are done in this field. Those are not countable for a PhD, but they're the kinds of research reports that banks ask me to do, that um, social enterprise organisations might ask me to do, government departments might ask me to do, credit union sector might ask me to do, citizens advice bureau might ask me to do, and so on. But that's my actual kind of uh, empirical data out of which the others were built. And uh, I just kind of had a little calculation there about how many words that totals up to. I reckon that, back of an envelope, the 23 published works, not including the six published works for portfolio, was well over 100,000 words. So it's not an easy option, this one, at all. You know, there's a lot of work actually at the back of all of that. On top of that, we had to do a linking uh, commentary and critical review, <coughs> which is a 6,000 word um, paper that brings it all together. And importantly, what I was tasked with doing is kind of having to prove that all of this made a difference out there in the world. That it wasn't just a thesis on a shelf, but this had changed government policy, that it had changed um, thinking throughout the credit union sector, that it had had an impact in local authority support for credit unions and so on. And this was the hard bit. I had to find every citation of my works everywhere. So I had to trail all the way through. It was interesting how I found, I even found it being cited in Japan, which was quite nice. Anyway, just to say a little bit more about these sections, the published works. Um, just to give, <clears throat> I mean, in the background I had, when I thought of going for the PhD, I felt I had seven. But it didn't get to 1998. It had a lot of the chapters of this kind of story of the development of the credit union sector, but what it didn't have was the ending. I needed a new kind of, I needed an extra um, published work in a journal. So that took a while. That must have took 18 months just to get that one, to write it, to get it accepted. You know, you're going through the process of getting a kind of a journal to take it and publish it and have it published before you can submit here. So I had seven. So I wrote another one that was eight. And I submitted eight for registration. It got knocked down to six. And why did it get knocked down to six? And I think this is an important point for anybody doing a PhD by published works. And it was one of the learning curves I went through. But I realized, of course, that I was lucky because I was talking about credit unions, is that you have to develop, you know, through all these papers, a single coordinated theme. And mine was about the transformation of the credit union sector. I could have been at John Moores University all those years writing papers on multiple different things, all sorts of different things. If they were two, if they were all about different subjects, I'm not sure how I could have pulled it together or you could pull it together to do a PhD by published works. It has to be a coordinated theme. So two of the papers I had were felt not quite on message, so they had to go. And of course, as I said, it was based on empirical research. Here are the, the chapters. I've just kind of, they go back to 2001, 2004, one on did on Latin America in 2004. <coughs> Action Research Project, and this is the Journal of Cooperative Studies, Economic of, Journal of the Institute of Economic Affairs, Local Economy, Journal of Social e Socioeconomics. Those were the ones that I submitted. But we had to do a link commentary as well. This was a 6,000 word um, um, accompanying document that went with those works. Included a brief summary, but you had to kind of, it wasn't just a description, 
this was quite a challenge because in that um, paper, because it was a new paper now, I had to kind of analyse the theoretical and conceptual base for change within the credit union sector over time, which was reflected in those six papers. I had to explore how they were and show how they were built on empirical research. And I had to show how ideas had changed over time. Remember, it started in 2001 to 2008. Actually, things I was writing in 2001 were being contradicted by me in 2008. You change, you know, your ideas. But so long as you could pick that out and show that progression, that was what people were looking for. They were also weren't looking for perfection. You had to be honest. I had to highlight the weaknesses and the areas for further research. That's what we always say, isn't it? So it's an area for further research. But you had to highlight you know, the gaps in what I was doing. The role of the internal advisor, I think, was... Um, did I do it? Yeah, it's OK. OK. I think the role of the internal advisor in all of this was critical. There is a strange thing, though, a strange thing, though, in the way of doing a PhD by published works, is that unlike by doing it with a thesis, where you, I guess you start off with an idea and a submission, and then you work on that for all those years, and you do the research, and you have a supervisor or two supervisors, and you get to the end. In this one, it's a little bit different, because without any appointed internal, advi internal advisor, they call it, for this particular way, rather than supervisor, you don't have an internal advisor. But on day one, to get on the program, if you like, you have to submit all of your um, works plus the commentary before you've sp spoken to anybody about it. I found that a little bit difficult to get my head around because you think that's at the end. Well, it's true, it's at the beginning. You submit everything at the beginning because that's required for registration. And it's only when the registration's accepted you get an internal advisor. So what I found the most important thing to do here was to find your own internal advisor before you did the submission to find out whether the papers that you were submitting were good enough, because I didn't know whether they were good enough, and whether what I was writing about kind of was good enough too. So I found a friendly professor who's left the university now, who was excellent, who went through it all with me beforehand. But once accepted, then you have 12 months to kind of go through it all again, really look at the papers, do any more. Luckily, I didn't have to do any more papers. I had to drop two to rework the commentary and uh, work on looking for the citations around the world and so I submitted about six months later. And uh, six months later, I, was, I did the Viva 2, which was really good and went down well. And uh, then that was the end of the story. Kind of got the PhD. And, uh, but it was all on work that had happened a long time ago. But I had to pull it together for now. 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>